Serendipity and luck are not words you hear captains of industry use often to describe their career, but Dave McLaughlin does. Those combined with a few miles between he and his advanced foods partner in Enid seem to have been a winning combination. I think the reason our deal worked as 50-50 partners, Paul Allen and I, was that I had my area and he had his area. And once in a while we get over, like if in the early days, if we were running short of production, I'd go up and work in the plant and things like that. But he always ran that. And then I ran sales and marketing. And when he would start telling me what to do there, we I wait a minute, go back to the plant. And then he'd tell me, what, if I was at the plant, go back to sales. So. Dave grew up in Austin, Minnesota, where the biggest business in town was Hormel, a place he swore he'd never work. But out of the Army, out of options and ready to marry, he put his head down and went back to ask for a job at Hormel he had smugly turned down. So, uh, I've changed my mind. Well, so what? You know, big deal. Uh, well, I really, I think I could do a good job for you. Ah, I don't know. But so I went there on Saturday morning and they put you through the ringer. They, they, one guy had talked to you, another guy had talked to you. The meat business in those days were a bunch of tough guys and they like to intimidate people and all that. So they're intimidating me for like hours. And, and then at like at three o'clock in the afternoon, they go, you're hired and be in Des Moines, Iowa Monday morning. You're gonna be a salesman. So that's how I started. And, and I walked, got to Des Moines, Iowa, they handed me a book and said, here's your accounts, go sell. So I don't know anything about the product. That's okay, you'll learn. Dave was at Hormel for years and a success. If I have a talent, it's getting to have the customer tell me what they want and listening to them and then, you know, saying, okay, well, we could do this, but how about if we did this, do it this way, you know, can you do it? A requested transfer brought him to Enid, Oklahoma, where he and Paul Allen recognized the huge growth potential in the products. Because it was the start of value-added meat products. I mean, they had sausages and things like that, but this is like marinated, fully cooked, breaded, you know, things that you were doing to enhance the product that was, it was greater than uh, um, what it was being done. More, more things for a restaurant or a consumer that they used to do at home. And so we said, this is gonna be a big deal. With only an idea and life savings in hand, fate or luck, brought them a plant that a local packer wanted to be rid of, food prices frozen by the government, and an agreement with Hormel that allowed Dave to work for them and himself. It was a natural progression. Not fearing uh, being in your own business. What I saw at Hormel and since then in a lot of people's cases, they come from a family where they all work for a company. So, you know, the, the idea of going out on their own, they just can't grasp it. And, and it's, you know, it's a little kind of a fear thing. And, or don't, just don't understand it. Well, I, luckily I had that background where I knew it wasn't I think I knew a little bit about the pitfalls and all that, but it wasn't like, I'm not gonna try it because I need the big company, you know, when we decided to go into our own deal. That was 40 years ago, and since, it has been onward and upward. The expansion into more production facilities, mergers and acquisitions, has made Advanced Foods now Advance Pierre Foods, one of the largest and most diverse food businesses in the country, with a goal of two billion in annual sales. Dave makes it seem so simple. And that's the story of our company, these niches. We, we saw that, not just me, I mean a lot of the people in the company said, you know, we were constantly searching for undeveloped niches. And the, like the East Coast Philly sandwiches were selling pretty well, and some on the West Coast. So, and you know, the, what we're gonna do is get into that business and develop in the rest of the country. He is quick to share the credit with Paul Allen and his pace-setting seven-day work week and amazing employees. We expected them to step up and say, "Here's we can make this product better. We can do this. Here's what I think. Have open communication. And I think that was the key. I don't, most people just want to be respected, want to feel like they have a chance to input on what they do every day. And I think we allowed that. His favorite job duty was loosely termed product research and development. 
Well, I just, I'm pretending like I am. I'm really just eating. <laughs> the day-to-day -day operations behind him, Dave now serves on the board, travels extensively, focuses on family, his foundation's work, and helping others find their path to success. If I can be an example of someone that just says, hey, you can get out and do something on your own, you don't have to work for a big company, or you, you're, not, you're only limited by the risk that you want to take, I mean, that's the part that I like. Grateful for all that he has been given and willing to share his success through leadership, philanthropy, and teaching, Dave McLaughlin is chosen to receive Oklahoma City University's Minder School of Business Entrepreneurial Spirit Award.